Welcome to the Catalyst Life Coaching Podcast with John Kim and Noelle Cordeaux. If you're inspired to begin your own life coaching practice or just want to learn a little bit more about what it's all about, visit journey.co. That's J R N I.co for more information. Your adventure awaits. Hey guys, what's up? Today we're going to talk about positivity, <laughs> the importance of positivity. And of course, we're going to talk about it from a coaching perspective because we are life coaches. We run a life coaching company together called Journey, J-R-N-I.co, if you want to check us and our awesome coaches out. Um, And we are here to give you our weekly tips and tools of the trade, how to coach yourself, how to coach others, how to be well. Yeah, and uh, various topics, um, everything from relationships to to just on and on and on. So yeah. Today, we're going to talk about positivity, and uh, this is a really simple but important piece. Yes. I think I think um, so many people... Scooch over, because we can't see you. We can, just, we can snuggle. So many people um, forget something so simple, which is just to uh, be positive. So let's, let's break this down, Noelle. Yeah, so, you know, I think a really great analogy to think about positivity is to think about how plants tend to stretch towards the sun and stretch towards sunlight. Humans are exactly the same. Humans innately move towards positivity because it feels good, because we know intuitively that it feeds us. Mm -hmm. A lot of people don't understand the actual science behind positivity, and the deal is is that it does indeed actually feed us. Positive emotions are very much like nutrients, right. and they feed your brain and your body in lots and lots and lots of different ways. They are good for your health, just like vegetables. Yeah, and I'm a visual person. I love this image of a plant um, growing and moving toward light, right? Yes. Uh, And if there's no light, it starts to die. And if you see light in your life as positivity, and that light could be positive people, positive experiences, um, anything that elevates your mood, uh, you definitely want to design your day where you're uh, getting a lot of that quote-unquote light. So what John's talking about is building your own personal positivity toolkit. Because what works for John to feel great, feel good, and really enjoy his day is completely different from what works for me because Mm -hmm. we have different personal and chemical makeups. We have different histories. We have different ways of being. So it's great to be a detective in your own life and start to notice what brings you calm, what brings you contentment, what brings you joy, um, and then what happens as a result of that kind of stuff. What, what do you notice, John, when you really engage in friends, fitness, food, and fun, which I think kind of is your toolkit. Yeah. Correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah. What, what do you notice? Um, I stay out of my head, right? Mm-hmm. Um, it brings me more in the moment, in the here and now. Uh, it elevates my mood. It makes me happier, right? But, you know, there's also this little piece where um, I feel sometimes guilty about it. Interesting. You know what I'm saying? Like if I spend too much time with my friends or if I'm doing something where I feel amazing, if I'm at the beach or if I'm my motorcycle for too long, whatever, there's this weird piece of me that kind of feels guilty like, okay, st- now it's Stop being positive. Now get back to work. Like get back to being miserable. Not that work is miserable, you know, but whatever that is. Um, and, I, and, you know, I think a lot of people can relate to um, not allowing themselves to, to experience positivity because sometimes they feel that that's not productive, that um, they're not, you know, they're, they're fooling around, that's extra, and there, there could be, uh, you know, it could be lined with guilt or even shame. I think that comes from a couple of different places. Like we talked last week about the three pillars of flourishing, which are achievement, mm-hmm. pushing your brain and body to its max, simple contentment and serenity, and then hedonics. And yeah. because of our Western history of a puritanical society, hedonics gets a bad rap. That's pleasure. That's fun. So of course you feel guilty. We've all been socialized to work, 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 achieve, achieve, achieve. But when you take the time to engage in positive emotions, it actually has incredible benefits for your positivity or not for your positive, well, has incredible benefits for your positivity, but has incredible benefits for your uh, capacity to do stuff in life as Mm -hmm. well. So for example, when you experience contentment and serenity and joy, 
you naturally want to go out and do more things. Mm -hmm. When you experience fear and anger, the sure. list of things that you want to do gets really short. Right. So when you uh, when you have fear and anger, you kind of create your own prison, right? Mm -hmm. You want to isolate. You want to. You have, you have no energy to do anything. Mm -hmm. Right. And doubt goes in there too. Yeah. You know, if you're sitting there living in doubt, living in fear, living in anger, um, you, you get literally stuck and sometimes physically stuck. You don't want to leave the house. You know, you don't want to engage in things. You don't want to produce things. Mm -hmm. um, another really cool thing is that positive emotions actually expand your brain and they help you come up with new ideas moving forward. Mm. Oh, I like that. Have you ever experienced that? Like, when do you get your best ideas? Sure, when you're positive and happy, not when you're um, negative and, and discouraged and down. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So there's this concept that I really love um, about thinking about positive emotions as an investment. Mm. Because they're like vegetables. You can't have just one. So if you're, if you're consistently investing in yourself by inducing positive emotions, you're consistently giving yourself a broadened playing field for coming up with new ideas, for living and being in different ways, and for getting physically out into the world more because you just happen to feel better. So you guys, you have to make it a non-negotiable that you're going to sprinkle positivity or design it into your day. Um, positivity doesn't just fall out of the sky every day. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, actually it does. I mean, there, it's all around us, but it's, it, it's our um, intentions, our lenses, our perspective, and our chasing it uh, that gives it to us. Um, if not, it's just kind of there out there, but we don't experience it. We don't get to, you know, digest our posi the positivity. So here's another cool thing. Positive emotions help you uh, expand your social resources. And social resources are so important because it's so hard to do life alone. You know, having that core group of friends that you can call on, um, you know, being out in the world and, you know, looking people in the eye and yeah. smiling at them, that only happens when you're in a positive state. If you're stuck in your negative mind, you're not making eye contact. You're not even really seeing other people or the right. world around you. Right. Your eyesight narrows. So... What do you notice about humans who are naturally positive or how do you think that it, it causes you to engage differently with them in the world? Um, here's what I notice. So when I see someone who is uh, extremely positive, and you know what, not in a fake way, genuinely a positive, happy, um, growth mindset person, A, it makes me check myself because I'm like, wow, I want to be like that, right? I want to have what she's having. And then it makes me, it makes me gravitate toward them. Right. And on the flip side, we all know this other type of person. I used to be like this negative down. Um, and if something good happens in my life, I always use the example, like if my mom won the lottery, she'd be like, oh, they have to pay so much taxes on it. You know, so it's like that kind of mindset um, is draining and they tend to take hostages and that you're going to go down with them. So, um, man, and it's so simple and it's not, it's not simple. It's not easy, but it is simple. And it starts with a choice of I'm going to, to put more positivity in my life so I can be more of a positive person. Yeah. This is what it's going to look like. And I have to execute this. Like Noel said, like vegetables, it's like diet. Um, if you start getting it into your life, it'll, it'll affect your state. Totally. I was hiking this morning and I try to make eye contact with and smile at people mm. when I walk. It's just something I do. Um, when I was on the trail today, 80% of the people smiled and made eye contact back. But there was this one dude, he was like angry. He yeah. was running up the hill. He had his earphones on. He had a scowl on okay, his face. Okay, that was face. me. Let's just be honest. No, was. it wasn't you. It, to it totally wasn't you. And, and he was coming towards me and... I'm, you know, I'm not a shrinking pansy, but my reaction to this guy was, I'm going to press up against the side of the mountain. I need to get away from this person. Mm. He's coming at me with aggression, you mm. know? Um, and just that slight nuance in behavior really signaled to me, you know, the difference between what I was experiencing, what I was putting out into the world and what this person was able just to completely destroy a beautiful mood by his affect. The last time I tried to make eye contact with people on the streets, I got arrested. Why? What no, were you I'm doing? Just <laughs> um, I love that thing that she has, and she's actually told me this before, especially in Los Angeles, because we tend to look at our shoes. Um, 
I like that decision. It's brave. And I think more people, I mean, we're people, we're supposed to connect. And so like this idea of looking at a stranger and smiling, it's so simple, but no one does it because they're afraid or because mm -hmm. it, it's creepy or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, and so, yeah, I definitely need to remind myself to to um, actually make eye contact and, and, and maybe maybe a half smile for me would be enough. Sure. Yeah. Well, you know what it does is it's a gift to other people. It lights people yeah. up, yeah. you know? Like, I can't tell you how often if I'm in the... Well, it lights you up if they smile back, too. Well, you know, well I mean, it's like, I think... I think too, you're right. Like people are so um, used to having exchanges with others that are kind of cold mm -hmm. in this city that mm -hmm. when you look someone in the eye and mm -hmm. just like give them a grin, you know, as you're grabbing veggie burgers, right. they're like, me? Me? You right. smiled at me? Right. Like, right. thank you, you know? Now, I want to say uh, everything that we're talking about, I believe with the, every fiber of my being how powerful it is, but there is this other side which is people who pretend to be super positive and they're dark and like dying inside. Oh my. But they're like, you know, like like exaggerated positive. And for me, that is a total turnoff. So so I, I make sure that the positivity is coming from a real place. So how do you do that? I mean, I, I guess that's one of the things we wanted to talk about today is how do you induce positivity when you're actually going through some shitty stuff, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's not just like I'm going to be a cheerleader. And, no, no, that's that's what I mean by fake and cheesy. Um, I personally, um, if I'm feeling down, and it depends also if you're an introvert or an extrovert, right? Mm -hmm. uh, I like surrounding myself with positive people, uh, going to uh, 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 either the tribes I have or the environment or the experience. So it's those three things. Um, when I say tribe, I'm talking about people. People, and I've got different types of people who give me different things, right? I've got guy friends who I can sit down and eat crepes with and talk about love if that's what I need. Or I have dudes that I could chest bump and lift weights with if that's what I need, right? And then experiences, I could have a good meal at a cafe by myself that'll make elevate my mood. Or I could go ride my motorcycle for 20 minutes. Or I could go for a walk or a hike. So things that um, change your state and and and, and bring positivity um, through experiences, through people, uh, and through environments. Some people just go to the beach uh, mm -hmm. if you're drawn to water, and they instantly just feel happy, right? Yeah. And that's not me, but some people just putting their toes in the sand is everything. So those are the three categories. Those, those are the three ways that I um, inject positivity into my life. It's never like like just wishing it. It's never just like <laughs> staying at home, being like, okay, I'm going to be positive. I'm going to be positive. Yeah, no, it's, it's an active... Uh, undertaking. Um, I'll give you some fun facts. So human beings are physically incapable of experiencing both a positive and a negative emotion at the same time. Mm, right. The, you can't it's like do you it. You can't live and hate it. Same you time. can't do it. Right. So if you collect a toolbox of memories that make you laugh out loud, um, or you live your life in a way where you embrace silliness and humor, mm -hmm. you can flip a bad mood pretty darn quickly. Mm -hmm. Another really great way to actually actively bounce yourself out of a really bad mood or doubt or a pessimistic place is to start future visioning and to, and this is a really great life coaching technique is to sit down with a client and say, let's talk about and really get into a place of what life will look like mm -hmm. five years from now when everything has gone as well as it possibly could. And allowing your imagination to play, allowing your subconscious to start kind of glowing right. will really burst you through that bad mood and get you into an awesome, awesome place. What do you want life to look like, John, five years from now when everything has gone as wow. well as it possibly could? Man, how much time do you have? Well, we have a little bit of time. Give me, give me, give me the cliff notes, and then I want to hear how you feel. You know what? I, I have a very specific uh, vision board or image of what what I wanted to what, what I want my life to look like. That being said, I'll be honest with you, and I was telling someone this last night. Um, I've never been in this place before where. If this is it, my life gets like I get nothing else other than so like I do my Facebook lives, I talk to our community, we, we teach our life coaching course, um, and I write books, right? Nothing more happens to me. I swear I'm saying this with with complete honesty. I will be happy. Like I don't I don't really need anything else, right? Of course I do want other things. Um, I've never felt that before in my life. I used to always feel like I'm not going to be happy until I get X Y Z, right? So how do and, you feel right now telling me that? 
I have gratitude. I have freedom. So the biggest thing is freedom. Being free and having peace with yourself and being okay with life. That is like, that's everything to me, you know. That being said, I'm also really ambitious. I want to, you know, I want to build our company. I want my house in the hills. I want to wake up wearing a robe every day and nothing underneath, maybe a cigar in you my mouth. You can do that now without the cigar. I, I know, but I have this vision that I'm on a hill. Um, <laughs> we can I want get my, you a hill, John. I want my collection of motorcycles. <laughs> I want a podcast room in my house. Um, I want a Korean barbecue in the backyard. I want uh, all, you know, all, all my little toys. I, I want to be able to travel. I've never been anywhere, right? Um, but if I don't get any of those things, I'm, I'm, I'm still positive. I'm a, pro I'm a positive person. Like I, I'm a lot more than I was before. I was very negative. Uh, I used to be a, a miserable fuck, which is maybe the title of my, my book. There you go. <laughs> so, so what I did just now was I induced a positive reaction from John. And it was through a process called capitalization. Capitalization is when you share happiness and good news with other people who are around you. So I got this endorphin burst from John just now because mm. he, I was grinning. I was right. grinning hearing his happiness, hearing his future vision, and it felt so good. And so we had an actual exchange. Like, energetic exchange between sure. us. And now we're both on this little endorphin high. And you can do that with your friends and family and people that you love. When was the last time you sat down with somebody and said, tell me all the good things? You know, tell right. me everything that's going right. well in your life. Tell me your dreams. Tell me where you want to go. You know, let's dream together. You know what? It reminds me of like when you sit at a restaurant with some friends and it's a restaurant you guys have been always wanting to go to and you're looking at the menu and you're deciding what you want to eat and there's like this moment of excitement. It's like, okay, you get that. I'll get this. <laughs> we'll share this. And you're in all this all, like energy is going and you're super excited and happy about tasting the food that's about to come. And it's kind mm -hmm. of like, a, you know, it's kind of like that, right? Yeah, a hundred percent. And, and, you know, knowing that you have the pos like the, you have the capacity to co-create those environments with the people in your life is just, it's a gift. It's magic. And, um, if there's anything that we can give you guys from our little talk today, it's that, you know, positivity is a choice. It's a mm. choice to engage in with your relationships and your behavior every moment mm -hmm. um, and stick with it. It's consistency. It's a practice. And you need to do it for 10 to 20 seconds at a time. Oh, I like that. So, guys, happy Friday. Please inject some positivity in your life. It starts with a choice. Yep. And uh, make sure that it's at least for 20 seconds. Yes. Yes. We love you. All right. Be well. Take care. Thanks for listening to the Catalyst Life Coaching Podcast brought to you by Journey. If you'd like to learn more about what you've heard on today's show, visit journey.co. That's J-R-N-I dot C-O. And request more information about the Catalyst Life Coaching Intensive or just keep in touch.